The Oneroi Collective. Entities living within the collective dreams of humanity are not a unique concept, with one of the best known examples being H.P. Lovecraft's Dreamlands, in which humans that possess a talent for dreaming can visit the Dreamlands and interact with other entities. In the SCP universe, dreams functioning as a metaphysical space is not quite so clearly understood, where it seems to be predominantly the home of the Oneroi. Oneroi is a Greek term referring to the personification of dreams, such as in Homer's Odyssey, in which Odysseus' wife speaks of a dream in which an Oneros spoke to her and calmed her grief. The entities we'll be talking about today are mysterious at best, and completely inexplicable at worst, but they are responsible for creating a number of anomalies, of which we'll be taking a look at a few. The Oneroi of SCP exist within dreams, some of which are human, some are not, and some have abandoned their physical bodies completely, while others only visit. There are multiple groups of Oneroi in existence, such as Oneroi West, the largest and most coherent group. They come together to form a hive mind of consciousnesses, although the members that form it, both visitors and permanent members, retain their autonomy and sense of self. This is generally considered the best group to be a part of if you're going to join one, although the hive mind prevents them from dying, which, as we've seen, is generally not great. The group we'll mainly be looking at though, and the group that the Foundation primarily cares about, is the Oneroi Collective. Normally, for a group of interest, I'd try and talk about their organization and goals, but the Collective is extremely mysterious, with many Oneroi believing that they exist within the majority of Earth's flora and fauna. Oneroi that join up with the Collective are either never seen again, or come back as twisted amalgams of many different things. What we do know about this group is that they're responsible for the creation of a number of anomalies that exist in the physical world. These anomalies are all especially unusual, and seem to exist to progress the Collective's goals in some way. I think it's best if we just dive into the SCPs in order to get some idea of what the group does. SCP-1498 is a collection of 30 bundles of phone cords and phone handsets assembled in a way that resembles sheep. Each of these instances are capable of movement, but currently they simply wander their containment chamber aimlessly. On each instance are the words, Make your own custom dreamscapes with your friends at the Oneroi Collective. When someone picks up one of these phones, they will hear three rings, followed by a voice identifying themselves as an operator for the Oneroi Collective. The operator will then instruct the subject on various dreaming options, and make some suggestions to enhance their dreaming experience. After the call is finished, the subject will lose consciousness for nine hours, during which they will experience a dream to the exact specifications that they described. For example, a D-class was instructed on what to say into the phone, and upon awakening described a dream in which they were a table in a slightly green egg-shaped room, while people possibly from the 1950s with red faces ate off of them. The dream ended with them all hatching. Use of 1498 is addictive, as subjects continue to want to sleep as frequently as possible, utilizing 1498 if they can. Unfortunately, prolonged use of 1498 results in gradual changes to their bodily and mental states, such as subjects coughing up telephones with cords extending into their esophagus, telephone wires growing in place of hair, and their vocalizations being replaced with dial tones. Portions of their cranium and skull will be replaced with telephone parts, and eventually a complete rotary phone will assemble itself on their heads. They will then begin to display the same intelligence as 1498 entities, with no way to restore them. 
They were first discovered in 1965 in an abandoned office complex in Florida after reports of bizarre livestock started cropping up. Foundation agents found the 30 instances, a bedroll, half a ton of rotary telephone components, and two pints of blood in a glass jar. Folded on the bedroll was a pajama onesie with several months worth of sweat and body oils soaked into the fabric. Another anomaly based around custom dreams is SCP-2876, a smartphone application titled Headspace that has appeared in various app marketplaces. It describes itself as a service making dreams from the floor to your door and allows users to purchase customized dreams and micro dreams. Inside of the app is a text box allowing users to request their custom dream, along with the length of the dream, ranging from a microsecond up to 72 hours. Once purchased, a message will appear reading, Deduction Reduction Complete, and the subject will immediately lapse into REM sleep. Most of the users of the app average between 30 minutes to an hour of usage at a time, with only a small percentage utilizing it for the 72 hours. They describe the dreams as being lucid and relatively accurate to their requests, with them also able to purchase additional dream time while asleep through in-dream menus that can appear. One review of the app reads, I never tried imagining where all the teeth that break in dreams go. Turned out they were in my dad the whole time. Thanks, Oniroi. While asleep, subjects are unusually resistant to being awoken, and their heart will cease to beat, although the rest of their body will continue to function as normal. If used for longer than one hour, however, a subject will enter a sleepwalking state, and what's more, objects they interact with while sleepwalking will function even if not powered. For example, microwaves will cook food despite not being powered, Vehicles will operate without the engine running, or, in fact, without even having an engine. Local area networks show inactive network-enabled devices accessing hundreds of websites at a time, and subjects are able to navigate any darkened area as though it were fully lit. Since users of the app are frequently engaged in intense physical activities, they do not receive most of the beneficial effects of sleep and will frequently reactivate the app in hope of getting rest. Long-term users of the app fall into four distinct groups while sleepwalking. Group 1, referred to as observers, spend most of their time observing their environment, seeking out mundane objects and documenting them by any means available to them, such as marking on their body. Any markings made will be removed once they cease sleepwalking, however. Group 2, Preceptors, will focus on sensory excitement, exposing themselves to extreme temperatures, weather, depths, and heights. They may stand in front of open ice boxes, touch hot irons, spend copious amounts of time running hot or cold showers, or if given enough time, will seek out blizzards or heat waves. Group 3, Thrill Seekers, will frequently place themselves in deliberately dangerous situations, although this behavior goes against the app's TOS agreement, resulting in the dream ending early. Occasionally, subsequent resting may involve nightmares about grinding in some form. Finally, Group 4, known as Consumers, will attempt to eat massive quantities of food in great diversity, generally everything in the subject's possession. During longer sessions, they will attempt to purchase large quantities of food, and will frequently attempt to place anything they can see in their mouths. Subjects are, however, reimbursed for any expenses and purchases during their time utilizing the app. If a subject is killed or otherwise seriously injured during their time with the app, it will delete itself from any devices in the subject's possession. Those that survive said injuries will have no memory of the app, and will rationalize their behavior by attributing it to drugs and alcohol. 
All other subjects who have used the app will wake up in possession of a business card, reading, Thanks for being a great host. We'll be back real soon. It would seem that the other half of this app allows some type of entity to take over the bodies of those that are dreaming, using them to observe human life and Earth. The app received an update at some point after discovery, with the update log listing an improved review system with sections for body feel, ectoplasmic congruence, and accessibility, along with automatic host tracking and alerts for body availability and better filtering of intent from dream entities inquiring on availability. So far, the Foundation has yet to find the other application that lets incorporeal entities take over human bodies. SCP-2028 is a collection of 258 empty snow globes, with the words, Remove the negative emotions and thoughts from your mind, with your friends at the Oniroi Collective, printed on the underside of each, along with instructions to not use more than three times per 30 days and in case of an emergency, to not break the glass. When one or more humans enter REM sleep within four meters of one of these snow globes, the subjects will invariably experience a vivid nightmare, with an intense sensation of relief upon waking. For the following three days then, the subject will report an increase in happiness and willingness to participate in social situations. The snow globe used to induce this nightmare will then be filled with images from said nightmare. If this globe is picked up and shaken, the subject will experience brief, random hallucinations related to the nightmare. If the phrase, please reset, is spoken within four meters of one of these used globes, the images will disappear, and it can be used again to induce another nightmare. Each individual globe can be used three times within 30 days without any additional effects, but if used more, cracks will begin to appear on the glass. If it's used six times within 30 days, or if it's otherwise broken, an area of local reality around the broken snow globe will be restructured. The size of the affected area averages 250 square meters, and it will be reconstructed to strongly resemble the nightmare that was previously contained in the globe. This restructuring typically disappears after a number of hours equal to the subject's sleep duration. The globes were first discovered in a farmer's home after he accidentally broke one of them, resulting in the entire home being affected by a restructuring. The farmer reported that he often had nightmares about being considered inferior due to not receiving a proper education. For whatever reason, the restructuring has so far been permanent, unlike all other events observed by the Foundation. The majority of the home was changed into black and white. Several books of varying nature appear and disappear randomly, and if one is picked up, it will become animate manifest teeth-like growths, and attempt to bite whoever is holding it if they don't finish reading it. Several lockers similar to those found in schools fill one of the building's hallways, filled with random contents normally found inside school lockers, although notebooks will contain text complaining about bullying or having to study. Any animals that enter the building will either be transformed into an object, or will be dragged by a human arm manifesting from a nearby surface into said surface. None of the animals that have disappeared in this way have been found. Several humanoid entities resembling students, teachers, janitors, and security guards will perform activities related to their profession, but will often have anatomical features replaced with objects like mops, pens, chalk, books, and chairs. They will also communicate solely through low-pitched gibberish. An individual identical to the farmer will appear randomly inside of the building and walk aimlessly. If spotted by the other humanoids, they will point at him and call other humanoids, who will gather and laugh. Another humanoid entity will wander the building or shouting the farmer's name and talking to itself. It resembles an adolescent male carrying a red backpack 
but his fingers are replaced with pens. Unlike the others, this one can communicate normally, and identifies itself as a close childhood friend of the farmer, although it's incapable of perceiving the copy of the farmer. The Foundation have tried to recreate the circumstances of this incident with D-Class possessing a similar phobia, but have so far been unsuccessful. Jumping over to something wildly different, SCP-2805 is the severed head of American industrialist Walt Disney, held in suspended animation in a cryonic freezer. Connected to this freezer are two rotary telephones, and printed on the bottom of it are the words Siberian Solutions from the Oneroi Collective. Whenever a human subject views the head, they will receive a phone call within 24 hours from someone claiming to be Walt Disney, who will speak at length about their hopes for the future, their desires, and the Epcot portion of Walt Disney World. Digital analysis of the voice confirmed it to be a match to recordings of Walt Disney from around 1965, and the calls are apparently coming from various locations owned by the Disney Corporation. Occasionally during these calls, other individuals in the background can be heard demanding to speak with the subject, but 2805 will generally ignore them. On the few occasions he hasn't, he's asked the subject to wait then a sound could be heard described as frozen insects hitting glass, followed by 2805 resuming the conversation and apologizing for delays from unimaginative souls. 2805 was discovered in 1967, around nine months after Disney's death, when several secretaries within the corporation began receiving phone calls coming from 2805. An executive member of the board of directors was called and began spending significant amounts of time working to bring Disney's original plans for Epcot to fruition. The foundation tracked down 2805 and contained it. Sometime later, they began receiving calls as well. In an impromptu interview conducted between an agent and 2805, 2805 tells him about his Florida project a future community where the bothers of the modern world could be forgotten, and future technology could be developed. This, of course, was the original concept for Epcot, as envisioned by Walt Disney. 2805 says that the people he left in charge can't grasp his same vision, but maybe someone else can. Maybe even the agent he's talking to. The agent, of course, does not think he's the right person to be speaking to about this, but 2805 insists that he is, with the help of the Foundation's resources. He says that they can use these resources to build a better tomorrow, and asks if the agent can dream it. The agent says that he doesn't know, but 2805 responds with, If you can dream it, you can do it. Walt Disney was, of course, a man of dreams, so I suppose it's not too startling that he got in touch with the Oneroi Collective somehow to keep on dreaming. While it's common knowledge that Disney was cremated upon death, urban legends about him being cryonically frozen continue to persist. Let's finish with an especially strange one, SCP-3739 a cognitohazard that spreads into human perception via hidden advertisements, targeted towards the worldwide paranormal market. It manifests from the human noosphere, meaning the collective of all human thought and information, as a company called Moosphere Incorporated. This is a little tricky to understand, but basically this cognitohazard exists within the general collective of human thought, but in order to present itself to us, it appears as a company, via hidden advertisements around the world. Advertisements are sort of the key to this, as the document starts by inoculating us against the cognito hazards, which isn't uncommon. What is uncommon, though, is that it inoculates us against the hazardous advertisements by showing us a different type of advertisement. The examples of harmful ads include 
milk, the meaning of life. If the moon is made of cream cheese, we'll sell it. And makes children and adults as swollen as cows. Moosphere Incorporated uses microscopy technology in order to send incredibly small cognito hazards into our world that anchor themselves onto symbols and signals we're already familiar with. These are also only transmitted when we're asleep, so we become susceptible to these in our dreams. That makes this anomaly pretty dangerous, as not only do they get planted into people's dreams, they're so microscopic that people don't even notice them as they're being affected. These advertisements produced are for an actual product, or actually a chain of products, that exist in both our real world and in our dreams. Not only that, but a large portion of these products are actually generated by us, specifically our brains. Moosphere takes a substance generated by our brains to create their flagship product, Mind Milk, combining it with some other metaphysical substances. Those that consume Moosphere products develop a buildup of milk curdles on their brains, which further influences them to consume Moosphere products. Again, to simplify, we have a company that basically exists in our collective minds, which creates milk products from metaphysical stuff created by our brains, and spreads ads to convince people to consume these milk products, which then cause people to want to consume more of these milk products. The foundation got a hold of some chocolate mind milk and did some testing to see how it altered their dreams. After a few days, researchers encountered a handful of different archetypes within their dreams, clearly related to the consumption of mind milk. One archetype consisted of the Moo Sphere mascot, Jackie the Clown Cow, a lean bovine with a mask resembling a fennec fox. The cow danced in the air, making cow noises and showering the researchers with soy milk. In another instance, a group of 15 child curdles, appearing as Golden Age animated cartoon characters with varying levels of injuries, appeared at the research group supervisor's home in the middle of the night. One of them, identifying itself as Creamy Charlie, recounted dairy-themed parables at 90 decibels. It's noted that the supervisor's young daughter was diagnosed with a medical condition wherein she had too little calcium in her blood a few weeks prior. Another researcher dreamt of a biblical flood consisting of tsunamis of milk washing over population centers. When the researcher woke up and called in to report the dream, an automated voice told him to please hold before expelling milk from the receiver at a rate of one liter per minute. This ended five minutes later when the researcher cut the phone line. 3739 was first discovered by the foundation in 1952, when workers surveying the upper Suez Canal accidentally breached an underwater chamber, releasing a flow of viscous white fluid. Workers that made contact with the fluid immediately began speaking in an unknown language, later identified as pre-Ptolemaic era Egyptian. An excerpt provided for us translates to Bat, my earthly mother. She leads me out of the depths of my head. She says it is nutritious. Should I siphon the teat? Why? While staying at an asylum, the worker who spoke that phrase began imitating marketing jargon heard on television, and began speaking Moosphere advertisements. A week into his stay, the worker lactated, filling his room with milk. He was eventually released, at which time he fled the country. His apartment was abandoned, but inside they found books by Dostoevsky and Freud, books on cattle farming and entrepreneurship, several documents indicating plans to establish a dairy farm, and a bathroom containing 200 liters of curdled milk. 
The foundation wouldn't become aware of Moosphere as a corporation until 2014, when television networks and the internet was flooded with cognitohazardous advertisements. Moosphere does maintain a physical presence in our world, reporting a total workforce of 61,000 employees, but it took the foundation quite a while to find any physical locations they operate out of. In June of 2023, two field agents were sent to a farm in eastern Wisconsin, impersonating FDA inspectors. The agents find farmhands mixing viscous fluids of varying color inside of the facility, while speaking in cognitohazardous advertisement jargon. One of the agents ends up deeper under the facility, in a section with aged concrete walls inked in white hieroglyphics. A number of old, dusty computers are present in cubicles, and puddles of white liquid are seen amidst the hay-covered floors. This agent is attacked by a group of 15 child entities with a hot glue gun, and a copious amount of white liquid is seen coming from his ears, before the feed is cut. Audio of various moans, bovine and human, are audible for the next 12 hours, alongside gurgling sounds. When a retrieval force is sent in, they find the farm empty, save for an undulating 1.7 meter wide udder, branded with the initials MM. The udder emitted male vocalizations akin to sobbing, and neither of the two agents were found again. They then managed to track down an IP address responsible for uploading a number of advertisements related to SCP-3739. They raided a compound in Wisconsin, finding a man named Jacob Drouse lying unconscious while connected to a number of tubes pumping a white liquid into his bloodstream from emptied milk cartons. After regaining consciousness, milk began leaking from his left ear canal. The man says that talking to the Foundation will result in the Moosphere Corporation causing gallons of milk to pour from his nostrils and mouth whenever he sleeps. Apparently, especially angering the Moosphere Corporation results in them turning you into the massive udder, which is what happened to a man named Dave, who worked at that farm. Dave had tried to reveal what was going on with the corporation, and thought that he was safe because he had turned on a VPN. The man also explains that the employees of the corporation are capable of collectively dreaming up the technology that they use to create and process the milk products. The process of joining the corp starts gradually, beginning with the subliminal advertisements. Over time, you start to get more and more tired, and consume more and more dairy products, until eventually you slip into a coma. At that point, the corporation has control over your subconscious. He also reveals that at the top of the Moosphere Corporation are some primordial bovine entities that exist within human consciousness, and he says that the Oneroi don't have jurisdiction to put a stop to Moosphere's activities. There apparently exists a place in the Noosphere known as the Marketplace of Ideas, and he ends the interview by saying that there are only two types of people in the world, those that drink mind milk and those that secrete it. A couple of weeks later, a video was uploaded to YouTube titled Sites of Wasaki, Northeastern Wisconsin, containing footage of the town's attractions interspersed with imagery of large, writhing, gelatinous bovine masses. Foundation pataphysicists investigated the town, finding a mass of 150,000 bovine memes in and around the town, eventually tracking the source to a warehouse at the town's outskirts. A small team of specialists raided the building, equipped with standard gear and some unique stuff, such as an astral projection kit. The team heads in, finding a number of docile cows and generic farming supplies, along with an office space containing hundreds of laminated posters showing motivational messages overlaid onto stock images of people drinking dairy products. They also find milk dripping from the ceiling that emits a faint green light. 
A tremor then shakes the entire facility, followed by a long cow moo, at which point the milk sample they took vibrates and grows ten times in volume. They then find a three meter wide teat, leaking faint green fluids, and although they make an incision into it, the flesh gurgles and grabs the cutting implement. Past a set of double doors, they enter into a massive chamber that slopes downwards toward the center. A writhing udder fills the chamber, producing hundreds of large teats which stretch and collapse. Sleeping individuals, presumably employees, levitate mid-air in groups of three around smaller teats as cream cheese flows in bulk from their heads down into a subterranean tank. A cow falls from an upper walkway, and as it falls, the udder trembles, resulting in the cow hitting the floor in slow motion and dissolving into a translucent white liquid. The rest of the cows follow suit, and some of the liquid sprays onto the team. A pale, floating pink udder approaches them and sends a telepathic signal to one of them, causing her to clutch her temples. She asks the udder what it wants, but it only undulates as if laughing. Another of the team opens fire on it, but since it's mostly metaphysical in nature, it isn't harmed. They then begin preparing the astral projection kit, while the udder displays a number of arms and an attractive plump face, spewing off-white fluids from its mouth. It giggles and shrieks and says, Your mother wants you to finish your milk. One of the agents tells it that they're lactose intolerant, at which point the 15 child curdle entities separate from the udder, most of them bombard the agent with runny cream cheese, while the others siphon fluid from the small udder while chanting, Eat it. One of the agents completes the astral projection ritual and her body goes limp. Her astral body begins pulling on loose teats on the small udder, while the children drag the agent covered in cream cheese towards it. While the astral agent battles the small udder, the third agent fires his gun at the large udder while yelling, You're not real. The flesh of the large udder goes erect and sprays milk at him, which he consumes without apparent stress. The astral agent eventually defeats the small udder, but the agent covered in cream cheese is no longer visible. The large udder begins shaking and spilling raw milk into the room, so the other two agents flee. Thirty minutes later, the missing agent emerges from the facility naked as a disembodied cattle brand marks him on the upper thigh, causing him to moo before it fries the drone recording them. For once, I think it's best if I don't explain any of this scene. Further investigation by the Foundation found several startling tidbits. Over 3,100 dream advertisements convinced dairy corporate executives, regional managers, and ranchers to sign away rights to their dreams during a week in October 2023. On November 21, 2023, several hundred livestock facilities experienced bovine and human inflation, their body fluids replaced with large amounts of anomalous milk product. This leads to thousands of Wisconsin residents being affected by dream advertisements. On January 30th, 2024, residents in Pennsylvania and Washington are also affected, leading to large numbers of civilians supporting the CEO of Moosphere for president, with running mate Jackie the Clown Cow. On February 9th, the CEO interrupts all of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Washington's major telecommunication broadcasts with a mass of cognitohazardous advertisements. The CEO appears on television, showing him opening his mandibles and bovine eye atop his brow as cream cheese secretes out of these orifices for 3 minutes and 27 seconds. So yeah. 
Ignoring all of the lovely milk-related imagery, what we have here is a group of entities that exist in another plane of existence, in this case the collection of human consciousness, and they seek to infiltrate humanity and alter our reality by spreading a mental infection, more or less. This is a mix of both a dream SCP as well as a pataphysical SCP, as they're able to create new things simply by having people imagine them hard enough. I realize that this one didn't really have much to do with the Oneroi Collective, instead being more associated with dreaming in general, but it felt weird enough to include. Rounding things back to the Oneroi Collective though, we didn't really learn a great deal about them. They exist within dreams, but can create anomalies that exist in the physical world. If they had a goal that could be clearly defined, it would seem to be to encourage people to dream as much as possible, likely to draw them closer to the collective. At the end of the day though, it's just a weird bunch of SCPs. <laughs>